10 4, we've integrated KML as a standard across the ArcGIS ecosystem in several applications like ArcGIS Pro, Server, and the new application, ArcGIS Earth. Now, ArcGIS Earth is a new desktop application that integrates the functionality of Google Earth. Now, many of us use KML files every day, and we share them across your organizations. But when working with KML files, we just expect to be able to drag them and drop them onto the Earth and explore. So let's take a look at North Korea. It's often in the news, and this particular KML file contains a lot of KML features. For instance, it has transportation, points of interest, and even locations of where they launch satellites. Now, since it's part of the ArcGIS platform, we can easily connect to our portal. Signing in, I'll have access to additional content from the organization. For instance, Airbus provided us some imagery over this area. And I can, net, can add an image service and zooming in, see the high resolution detail, the detail of this particular image, as well as the terrain in this area. Now, when Airbus delivers their imagery, they also provide a KML file that shows the satellite position and the footprint of where that image was taken. Since you can connect to your portal, you also have access to all your base maps. Let's take a quick trip now to Amsterdam and take a look at some real-time data. And this data is coming from a net KML network link in Amsterdam. An example are these airplanes and flight paths that are being updated every few seconds, as well as these noise sensors in this area. Now let's go to a place I really like, San Diego. As GIS analysts, you don't just work with KML files. There's many different data types out there. For instance, we work with shapefiles and other web services. ArcGIS Earth allows you to connect and add many different types of web services, like these 3D buildings in San Diego. Collada models are often shared as KML files. And we can quickly view these 3D models, like the Coronado Bridge. But it's not just about local content. It's also about global information, like this beautiful image of the age of the seafloor from NOAA. So ArcGIS Earth is just one example of how we've integrated KML and 3D across the ArcGIS ecosystem. Another ex couple examples is using the soon-to-be-released ArcGIS API for JavaScript 4.0. Now, this particular web application contains 100 years of seismic activity data from the USGS. And using this application, I can begin to interact with this data and click on a location and see it highlighted on the globe. And this is a great example of just visualizing 3D content in a browser without a plug-in. But we can also look at analysis. For instance, this particular application allows us to use ocean currents to predict where the migration of a message in a bottle would go, an oil spill, or even help us understand how the ocean currents have helped famous explorers. And these are just a couple examples of how you can use 3D today. Jack? That's good. Thank you, Joe. I think that you guys recognize this is a, not just the desktop version of Earth, but it's also browser-based 3D visualization. That's a new notion. Um, and the idea that it accesses the full GIS stack to be able to do analytics and then visualization like this. Also, when she zoomed into San Diego, that wasn't a cached model of city stuff. She was reading in from another server that 3D visualization. So imagine where this will go. There'll be distributed servers everywhere. We connect to it. We use the visualization model to bring in those 3D information sets, layer them on top of the globe or the 3D rendering. In other words, a WebGIS architecture.